Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, whoops, who scrolled down a little bit too far and moved my pictures a little bit too much. And welcome to titrations! Okay, so let's get started with that. Okay, so titration, a purpose. Okay, so our purpose is to find, oh, I didn't really put my purposes on here very well, did I? So my purposes are basically to find molar mass or moles or volume or molarity. Okay. The equation we're going to use is XMV equals XMV. So X, and we've done this before with dilutions, X is the number of H's for acids and OH's for bases. Remember, acids start with H. H, A is your general formula for acid. So if it starts with H, it says, hello, I'm an acid. Or it's the rest of the molecule, C, O, O, H. And this is the H that you'll see. Okay? Bases for us will either be OH's or, and this would be X equals 1, if you have the rest of the molecule, N, H, 2. Okay? All right. So if it's not clearly an acid or a base, and this is true all the time, X is the coefficient for the other reactant. Okay? So if I'm titrating MnO4 negative with C2O4 negative 2, what is the X for MnO4? So this is MnO4. Its coefficient is 2. The other reactant is 5. This is oxalate, C2O4 negative 2. The other coefficient is 2. Okay? So that's the X value for it. If I have H2SO3 plus NaOH, uh, it's a equals, it should be yields. Na2SO3 plus 2H2O. What is the X value for H2SO3? So notice I have two H's, that would be two. Or notice, hey, hot dog, that's the coefficient. What is it for NaOH? Notice there's one OH, so it's going to be one, but hot dog, coefficient's one. All right. Determine the concentration. Uh oh, I'm nervous now about my calculator being around. Uh, <clears throat> so, XMV, so the, oh, the things that we do. So this is okay. purpose to solve for XMV equals XMV. Determine the concentration and don't forget our X's, okay? So when we do this, sometimes I'm, I made up the X thing. I just don't forget the right answer. I'm being honest with you. Um, so don't forget your X's when you're doing this. And find the concentration, molarity, and resolve for that. Determine the moles. Don't forget your X's. Determine the molar masses. Don't forget your X's, okay? So... This is it. So all of these are basically rearrangements of XMV equals XMV, right? So remember, molarity equals, we can re be rearranged for moles equals MV. So molarity equals moles over liters. So that's where we get moles equals MV, right? So when you see that, you go, oh, MV equals moles. So we're really saying moles equals moles or M1V1 equals moles, okay? Um, and determine molar masses, and again, mass over molar mass is moles. So notice moles equals mass over molar mass, moles equals M1V1, mass over molar mass equals M1V1, okay? Equipment, burette. This is, see if I can get to, this is the burette. It's tall, all that other stuff, one drop at a time. Pipette is right here. So pipettes have two things. It is a pipette is smaller and it often has a little bulb. Okay? Those are two different types of pipettes. The analyte. The analyte goes on the bottom and the titrant goes on the top. Okay? So uh, and an indicator. You put a couple of drops of indicator. Procedure. Put the desired amount of analyzed item in the flask, solid or solution. This in our problems will be given. It's a nice even number, like two grams. If it's a solid, and a lot of times it's a solid, just dissolve it with water. Um, volume of water doesn't matter. Add an indicator to the flask. 
unless a natural color change happens, which is rare. It does happen sometimes, and it will tell you, oh, the solution changes color because of blah, 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 blah. Now, when this happens and it's rare, we've been working on this before, um, you usually have a D metal, an unfilled D metal. Rinse the burette with what you will put in the burette. So this is a common error. If you use water, H2O dilutes the molarity in burette. So you have to rinse it with what you're going to put in the burette. So see how this is orange? We would rinse the orange thing with, we would take that burette and rinse it with the orange thing and then put it back in. Record your initial burette reading two decimal places. I don't care whether you struggle with what to do with it, you need two decimal places always in a burette. Add solution to the burette until the color change occurs and stop when the change is persistent. I'm going to add the word barely. Okay? So the color change should be light. A lot of times we use phenolphthalein, which is a light pink. And if you have a dark pink, you know you went too far. Record the final uh, burette reading to decimal places. All right. So the calculation you have to do is find the volume that you put in, subtract, which would be your initial minus your final. Super easy. Find MV molar mass or mass. Now, some of the other calculations you might get is calculate or determine on what indicator you need. So an indicator is good plus or minus one pH unit. So there are many to choose from, and you really can't add too much. So it usually says two to three drops, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's not going to be a real error. So if I want something that changes at a pH of five to six, I would use methyl orange. Okay, if I wanted something that changed at seven, I would use litmus or I could use methyl red um, because that's within one of those. Okay. Um, so here we go. Write the net ionic equation. So on this one, notice how the Na is always soluble. So I'm going to get rid of that. So H3BO3 is weak. So I'm going to write it together. H3BO3 plus OH negative will give me H2O plus BO3 negative 3. And this 3 tells me that BO3 is negative 3. So to balance this, um, I need... Gin, 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 oh, why is this looking meaner than I want it to look? Um, okay, so I want three waters. So, yeah. So that'll give me three H's and three OH's. Yeah, sorry that took me so long. Triprotic boric acid is composed of hydrogen, boron, and oxygen. A sample of 1.67 grams of boric acid is titrated with that and requires that to reach the end point. What is the molar mass of boric acid? Now, in this case, um, we see that boric acid is H3BO3, but we're going to do this anyway. So we're going to do XMV equals XMV. Okay. Now, that's my first thought. Okay, now remember how this is moles, right? So I'm going to use this for the mass, x mass over molar mass equals xmv. Okay, so um, on this, H3PO3, oops, did I forget to put my three, I put three waters, I forgot to put three OHs there. So my x value for boric acid is going to be three three H's, right, or three is the other coefficient. The mass that I used was 1.67. I'm going to solve for the molar mass. And the molarity of my friend here is 2. And the volume of my friend here is 0 0.0432. Remember, got to go to liters. Solve for molar mass, put it in your calculator, and you get 62.02 grams per mole. Titration is performed to determine the number of moles of H2SO3 in a 20 milliliter sample of water to predict the corrosion of pipes in the school. When 20 milliliters of an unknown H2SO3 is titrated, it required that many to do it. How many moles is in the sample? So again, we can simplify this a little bit. I'm going to write the equation out, H2SO3. Um, when H2SO3 is titrated with KOH, going to give me K2SO3, which I really don't care about, plus 
H2O. Now notice I'm going to need two of those, and that'll give me two waters. Okay. So again, I'm looking at, I like to put my acids on the left and my bases on the right. Okay. So XMV equals XMV is my first thought. Good morning. And a uh, number of moles of H2SO3. So I want to do moles of that. So that's going to be um, X for H2SO3 is going to be 2 times moles equals um, 1, because there's 1 OH and KOH, where the coefficient is 1. And the molarity of KOH is 0.155. And the volume of KOH is 0 0.0118. Eight. And when I solve for moles, I get that answer. So my calculator is not. I got it out of my room, and I don't have a, a calculator, but that's it. Contraction lemonade needs to have that molarity um, concentration of monoproduct citric acid to meet quality taste requirements. 125 milliliters of lemonade is titrated with 0 0.01. So this is lemonade. I'm going to call my lemonade. Um, Citric acid, so I'm just going to call it HC. Citrate at the point one, I notice it's monoprotic, so that's H. I'm going to emphasize that one. The taste requirements 25 milliliters of lemonade is titrated with 0.1 molars, so it requires this many titrate solution. Does the solution meet quality standards? What is the molarity? So I have H citric plus NaOH is going to give me Na cit plus H2O. Notice I don't even care what the citric acid really is, right? So I'm going to do this in here. XM1V1 equals XM2V2. So in this case, um, what is the molarity? Uh, I'm trying to find the molarity, right? So for citric acid, X is going to be 1 because it's monoprotic. Searching for the molarity. I've used 25 milliliters, 0.025. Whoops, 0.205. 0.025 equals, I got 1 for NaOH, the molarity of that is 0.01, the volume used is 0.02475, and I sell for the molarity. Right? So what I would do is 0.01 times 0.02475 and 0.025. All right, so um, does it meet the requirements? It looks like it's not going to because it's, well, I don't know. We'll have to, have to throw my calculator and figure it out. Um, that will probably be one of the questions on your little daily quiz things. Graphs, equivalence point. Um, the equivalence point is the point of inflection. Equivalence point, um, halfway to equivalence. This is the equivalence point, halfway to equivalence. This took, what, about 25? This is um, the buffer region. Strong and strong are very steep. It's very steep. So this is strong and strong. Notice strong and strong. Strong and weak makes it less extreme. Weak and weak, not as extreme. That's all you got to do. And that's all we got to do with that for now. So I will say, Tee!